This is Evan Abrams, and today I'm going to talk to you about using the text animation effects in After Effects. It's really more like a, a tool and a subset of the text layer that's on all text layers, but a lot of people don't know how to use it, and I'll talk you through how to use the range selector, how to apply properties, and we'll just go through some basic stuff. We won't get into combining range selectors or any of that stuff, but we'll go over just the basics of how to get in there, how to get your feet wet, how to get your hands dirty. Are there any other metaphors for getting started with stuff? I don't know. It's all about how to use that range selector to say which parts of the words or phrases or whatever is going to be affected, and then picking all the right options for what you've got going on. So we'll get into what those options are, we'll try to make something cool, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed some of the text that's uh, coming and going as I'm talking here, talking out of my face hole. So I'm Evan Abrams, let's get into After Effects and animate some text. So we're here in After Effects, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new composition. So I'm just going to right click in the project window and go New Composition, you can call it whatever, you can have whatever settings you want, it's not really important. Here down in the timeline, we're going to go New Text, because we're interested in working with text. And then we're just going to type in whatever we would like. So, some text to animate on, and uh, we'll do that. So we're just going to be concerned with animating on text. Now, if you want to change the way your text looks, you're going to need to use the Character and Paragraph. Uh, windows. If you don't have those up, go window and then uh, pick them out of here. There's paragraph and there's character. So I have mine just over here. For now, we're just going to leave those alone and uh, just going to scale this up. When we want to use the text animator, we just twirl down using this arrow over here and then you can see text and along we have animate right here. So click on this little arrow. It'll bring up a bunch of properties for you to animate. So we've got you know, change the anchor point, change position, scale, skew, rotation, opacity, all of the above. You can change the fill color, stroke color, stroke width, blah blah blah. We're going to use scale just as an example because I find visually it looks fine. So that creates an animator, a range selector, and whatever property you put in. And basically what you're saying is for this animator, within this range, do this thing. So from, we can see these little icons here, we've got the, the arrow and the line, the arrow and the line, so that's start and end of the range. So the start is at 0%, the end is at 100%, so this is 100% after the, after the end. And uh, during that range, I want you to put the scale to 100. So what we're going to do, because we're having things animate on, is we'll set this down to 0. So for this entire range, make the scale 0. And then we're going to animate the start point from 0, so right now it's encompassing from 0 to 100, and then it'll move all the way down to encompass uh, nothing, because it's 100 out of 100. So then we have text animating on, which is great, and I'm sure this looks wonderful, and if this is where you want to stop and get off the bus, that's great, because you've just figured out how to use the text animator to do the simplest thing. But what we want to do is get here into the advanced and really use these settings to help us out to make things like lyric videos or motion typography and that kind of thing. In those instances, usually you don't want to animate by character, you know, the S-O-M-E space, you want to use per word. So change based on to be based on not characters, not characters excluding spaces, not lines, but words, and then what that looks like is each word comes on, you know, in its own time. So that's good. And then the other thing is, what if we want to try to sync up the words? Well, it can be difficult when you're trying to go based on this percentage, because I don't know how much percent of this sentence, uh, well, it's not really a sentence because it doesn't have predicates and whatever, but anyway, I don't know how much of this phrase the word sum is as a percent, but it's got you covered by changing the units from percentage to index, so it'll tell you, you know, this is number one, two, three, and so on. Right now, we're based on words, it knows there's five words, and, you know, it'll animate on one, two, three, four of them, you know, one at a time. It's going to zoom in here on these, and if you're going to sync up the words to things, you're going to want to set a keyframe for every word. So, I'm just going to go ahead a bit, and uh, set this to one, and then I would like number two, and then, you know, I think, you know, set this one to three, and then pinch this in a little bit because it doesn't doesn't really take that long to say the word two, 
and then animate and then finally this one is the last one so here I'll just move those along a little bit to kind of change their timing so some text to animate on that's pretty good we've got all of those synced up and if we had words like an audio waveform to sync to it's pretty easy to just move these around we want to also change things like the smoothness so we can make these animate on smoother less smooth so here if I change the smoothness down to zero you can see that it just kinda blink 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 kinda like that but if the smoothness is up then it'll actually animate which is great these two, the ease things, I find those to be very interesting because um, this is how you create a bit more character into your uh, animating. So when you ease low, that means ease out of your animation. So you can see they kind of come on fast and then slow, so fast and then slow, and then the reverse is if you ease high, you know, that's slow and then fast, slow and then fast, like that. Now you can set these down to like minus 100 as well, so if you want to change that it kind of accomplishes the same thing so like minus 100 on ease high is similar to plus 100 on ease low so I'm just gonna set this to zero put this to positive 100 because I find that is nice and then you can also like randomize the order if you want animate on text to some but I for this purposes I won't um, that also gives you the random seed there so that's a thing what other options are in here they might be interested in um, the mode is saying um, add, subtract, intersect. This is whether the range selector is adding to the things that are going to be having the scale applied to it or it's going to take them away. So if we go subtract, you can see that the reverse of what we did happens. So as the range selector shrinks, then it goes to zero. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. We're animating things on, so we want the mode to be add. So that was good. That's all the advanced things there. And now that we have everything timed up the way we want, we might decide that, mm, I didn't like the scale, you know. Instead, I want to change this to be animating on using opacity. So we can go over here, we can go to add, we can go property, we can add the opacity to it, and then move this down to zero, and then take the scale and delete that and now you can see things are coming on same timing same everything but it's all using opacity but uh, I like scale and opacity at the same time so that's what I'm gonna do and then you might decide well I don't like this font very much so I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it to this font how about that maybe I'll change it to to whatever I want maybe I'll change it to all kinds of weird font maybe uh, maybe I like that font there's so many so many fonts that I can't even read that font but really you know, you can change around all the options here to make all kinds of wacky stuff. Like if you suddenly decide, you know what, I want to change up, change up some of my options here. And, or maybe a producer comes by and says, well, you know, change up some of your options here. So this is uh, a terrific way to quickly be able to go in and then uh, make these changes to your stuff. And again, once we're done all of this process, you'll see that it hasn't changed the manner in which everything animates on. You know, it's still coming on at the same speed, still coming on in the same way, um, and really, you know, we can make all kinds of wacky changes if we want. Um, and it's not going to affect us in the slightest. So one last thing while I'm here and we're talking about scale, and I specifically use the scale because I wanted to get into this more options here on the text. One thing that you'll find is right now, as it's scaling on, each of the characters are scaling on. And if you don't like that, go into more options, go into anchor point grouping, and if you see all these tiny red X's, that's showing you where the anchor points for each of those are. You can say, instead of per character, why don't you be per word? That could be fun. So now it has one tiny X for each thing. What does that do? Boop, 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 boop. So you got that going on. You can change the, the alignment of that grouping. So you can move this to be, you put in minus 100, it's going to animate on based on this corner down here. So that's great. And uh, I enjoy the way that looks. And this is like a quick way to make titles, to make motion typography, to make all that kind of thing uh, really uh, spring to life for you. So hopefully this all makes sense. This is just a basic intro on how to set this up and how to do it. Um, I'll do a more advanced tutorial on uh, how to uh, 
how to combine range selectors, how to have multiple animators going on your text and that kind of thing when you want to get into more advanced types of stuff with these. And, you know, we'll do 3D and stuff like that. But for right now, this one's just the basic. So if you have any questions about this, just let me know, and I'll try to answer them either in the comments or you can, um, or you can tweet at me, at uh, E.C. Abrams on the Twitter. You know, that's some shameless buzz marketing by me for me. If you have any questions or requests or anything like that, uh, just tweet them at me, follow me on there, subscribe on here if you want to learn more about After Effects. Uh, hopefully this isn't too rudimentary and boring for you. I know people want to know some advanced stuff, but we have to get kind of the groundwork in first. So I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks for watching. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe, or you know, like, hate on this, do whatever. You know, if you want to see more things like this, and hopefully you do, uh, come back to the channel and learn more. And we'll get into some more advanced stuff later. I'm going to try to put up a video every week. Uh, that's the goal anyway. Um, again, I'm Evan Abrams. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.